Number one. I should have got like a sound effect where they, it's like the, the countdown guy. Number one. Something like, I don't know. Wasn't thinking ahead on that. I apologize. Uh, number one, flexible batteries. Powering wearable technologies for healthcare and e-textiles. We're talking about flexible batteries. Because everybody knows battery is a large, not necessarily large, but it's a very hard object that if you try to attach that to your clothes, it's going to get in the way. Don't want to get it wet and all that type of stuff. They're working on ways to get around that and power clothes, basically, which we'll talk about in a second. But... When we talk about the Internet of Bodies and how they'll be able to power these electronic devices within clothes and materials, flexible batteries, of course, is going to be required. These batteries are rechargeable and can either be coated with or printed on graphene, carbon, fiber, or cloth. So you saw the picture uh, that they had on there. Uh, you can see, it. well, it kind of looks like circuitry but it's on cloth, like cloth circuitry type of thing. Well, they've been making advancements on trying to get clothes to be sensors and track, I think, tracking things and whatnot. Like I said, we'll get into that. But of course, to do that, you have to be able to power it. And again, you strap a battery onto your clothes, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be in the way. So we've talked about all the devices that they want to use to monitor uh, monitor us, whether it's our vitals, brain waves, geolocation, and more. And these batteries can power those without getting in the way. And we've also talked about how with 6G, because I know there's been some people who were like, okay, what's what's going on with the next G of stuff? Well, we've talked about 6G already, and they want to turn us into antenna. They've already been uh, testing this stuff, and it's working for them. It's just not rolled out yet. Um, but basically, Basically, what they want to do is 6G, and like I said, it's already working. They've already got it working. Our body energy will be used to charge batteries. So that was one of the things. They want to be able to use our body energy, the, the heat, the energy that our bodies put off, and they want to be able to charge batteries with it. If you guys have ever seen The Matrix, you see the predictive programming because one of the main points of that is the machines took over the world. They put all the humans into a matrix like world. So they're, they don't know what's going on in the real world and they use body heat or, or body energy as batteries to power the machines. Well, they're basically doing the same thing with 6g. That's what they want to do. It's not science fiction. It's not a movie. I'm not making this up. This is actually what they're doing, not trying to do. They're doing it. And so with 6G, they want to turn us to, into antennas, and they want to use our body, body energy to charge the batteries. Remember, these flexible batteries are rechargeable. And they also want to make us, like I said, antennas. They want to be able to transmit data, and they've already done tests with wearable rings, bracelets, earrings, and other various objects that you put on the human that can uh, that's basically attached to them that it'll charge batteries and send out data that way. We see the design of this Internet of Bodies thing taking shape. They want to be able to track you, and they're going to use your body energy not only to power the device, but also to transmit the data as well. So you're going to be doing all the work so they can monitor you 24-7. That's what they want to do with 6G. Now, there's also something interesting. Now, we've talked about IARPA before which is basically DARPA for other um, stuff. It's like a different department. Uh, it's still funded and, and maintained by the U.S. government and, and the Pentagon and all that stuff. But we talked about the IARPA Haystack, which is their AI system used to monitor people uh, everywhere, basically. They said even if you're living off the grid, this Haystack program will still be able to monitor you. It's not about... Uh, protecting your privacy anymore. It's about knowing what data they're collecting. That's what the guy from the Haystack program said. So there's no privacy anymore. It's all about just knowing what data they're collecting. Um, but they also got another thing, and this is not a joke. This is real. It's called the IARPA Smart E Pants, Smarty Pants program. The Smart E Pants program, which is 
smart, electrically powered and networked textile system. The whole point of this is to weave hidden spy technology into clothing and make it so you don't even know what it's uh, that it's there. They want to make this so you you just, they want your clothes. They they want to be able to monitor you via your clothes and to power this type of stuff you need the flexible batteries to do it. The goal is to integrate audio, video and geolocation into clothing where it's undetectable even by the wearer and can be washed, stretched and take impact without any issues. And with this smart e pants sensors that includes cameras, microphones and geolocation sensors and what they're telling us at least is it must be able to perform sensing events uh audio that can record at least 60 minutes of conversation something tells me that that's something that it can hold 60 minutes and it, then you can just go over that and it starts deleting the stuff prior um i'm sure they've got something much more advanced than that that's just my opinion though um video with a field view of at least 55 degrees must do one or both of record 360 monochromatic photographs record a two minute monochromatic video and then location geolocation indoor geolocation system that can provide relative readings every 10 minutes for an hour uh uncertainty no more than 10 meters at least 100 meters away from a reference point of origin assume an environment without access to global navigation systems yada 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 and so we're seeing what they want to do with this now who's to say that they just don't start putting it in everybody's clothes without telling them y'all gonna be running around naked i don't suggest you do that but this is what they're they're trying to accomplish they want it in the clothes now it should come as no surprise though because quite a few years ago Klaus Schwab himself even talked about putting these things in people's clothes. And I've got an interview from it. Now, this was uh, an interview from a foreign country, and so you'll need to read the subtitles. But he explains it. Check this out. Aujourd'hui, au bout de ça, on parle de puce qu'on pourra s'implanter. Ce sera quand ça? Certainement dans les dix années à venir. Et d'abord, on va les implanter dans nos vêtements, uh -huh. c'est-à-dire wearables, comme on le dit. Et après, on pourrait s'imaginer qu'on les implante dans nos cerveaux ou dans nos topos. Et à la fin, peut-être, il y a une communication directe entre notre cerveau et euh, la, le monde digital. Ce que nous voyons, c'est une sorte de fusion du monde physique, digital et biologique. On appelle quelqu'un, on n'a même plus le réflexe de devoir prendre un appareil, ça se fait naturellement. Hein. La, la, la technique continue le corps. Oui, vous, vous, vous parlez et vous dites, je veux maintenant euh, euh, être connecté avec n'importe qui. Hein? Et d'abord, vous avez les robots euh, personnalisés. Et j'ai vu que M. Zuckerberg a, a prédit qu'à la fin de l'année, il va avoir son robot, son butler personnalisé ouais. qui est à sa disposition. Donc, comme dans Downton Abbey, on aura son, son butler personnel, son serviteur, son esclave. Oui, mais, mais il y a une différence. C'est un serviteur qui, avec euh, l'intelligence artificielle, apprend et qui n'est pas seulement euh, votre assistant pour des travaux manuels, mmh. qui peut vraiment être un partenaire intellectuel de vous. All right, so they kind of did a, a wide, broad stroke of this type of stuff, but basically when Klaus, their Uncle Klaus, uh, eats the bugs, Uncle Klaus, what basically he said is, um, before we start putting this stuff in people, these chips and whatnot, we're going to put it in their clothes. And so this is what they're working on. We already know they're working on putting it in people, but they're also working on putting it in clothes as well. Now there's a multi multi-front head on this one because obviously they want to track and trace and do all the stuff that that smarty pants thing was basically saying but at the same time this is a part of the circular economy which is something that the wef has been pushing for a long time where you know everybody has heard you will own nothing and you will be happy well what they want to do is they want to create an entire economy where you borrow everything everything is borrow based and they need to have 
passports, seriously, digital passports on everything. So the businesses basically always maintain control of the products and all you're doing is borrowing, you're renting. So you won't own anything. And that includes clothes. If you don't believe me, they're doing it. It's also worth noting, um, one of the 10 industries, because remember that uh, speech by Charles at COP26, he talked about the 10 industries, uh, who I believe are going to be the 10 kings. Uh, he named off five, and one of them was fashion. And so when we start seeing the element of fashion, clothing, that type of stuff, we see two aspects on that. One is the clothing. We understand what they want to do with all the clothing, but two... Well, one of the biggest side projects of fashion, of course, is child trafficking. So makes a whole lot of sense when you look at the double, double-edged sword that um, fashion is involved with, how that could be one of the kings right there. So something to think about as far as that. So flexible batteries on clothing. This is a big one. Uh, they have a lot of things that they want to do with clothes. Uh, we see the aspect of tracking and tracing, the circular economy, you will own nothing type of thing. And of course, all of that is going to need batteries along with 6G, which you will power all of the stuff that they're using to track you. Isn't that awesome? You're doing all the work to make sure that they can see you. <laughs> 